on today's edition of Your Life Redefined. 10 million cells in this camp. It might sound like something out of a science fiction movie. We take these stem cells and place them in bone. They should be able to turn into bone. We place them into heart tissue. They should be able to turn into heart tissue. Put them in cartilage. They should be able to turn into to cartilage. Okay, yeah. Good. We're taking an in-depth look at regenerative medicine and how it's impacting both veterinary and human medicine in our country. We all have incredible stem cells that can be used to do amazing things and, and really self-healing is what we're all about. All this and more on today's edition of Your Life Redefined. Hi, I'm Dr. Anna Marie. We're gonna to kick today's show off with a very special pet feature with my dog, Buka. Wait till you see how veterinary medicine is leading the way when it comes to modern medicine. Meet my four-legged kid, Buka. Three years ago while herding the horses, Buka injured her right rear knee. She completely tore her cranial cruciate ligament, which is equivalent to our anterior cruciate ligament, or ACL. It's a very common sports injury in dogs, just like us. But with dogs, due to the slope of their knee joint, this can be a challenging repair, especially for large active dogs like Buka. We used to have the ACL here, or the CCL, okay? And the whole idea is to keep these two from moving back and forth. So the ACL, think of it like an emergency brake in the car. It's gonna keep your car from sliding down the hill, okay? Now this is starting to become insufficient, and so what's happening is when Buka walks, we start to feel that shifting, that's uncomfortable. So we don't wanna to try to mimic it with a, a graft or nylon. That's sort of an old school way to, to perform the procedure. With a dog that's very, very active like Buka, I would worry that that would start to break down and not hold long term. Dr. Sherman Knapp is one of the top veterinary orthopedic surgeons in the world. I scrubbed in on Buka's surgery to get a close-up look at the aggressive knee reshaping procedure known as a tibial plateau leveling osteotomy. So we're going to come in, make a small cut in the bone. We're going to take the bone then and we're going to rotate it. And what that's going to allow us to do is bring the top of the bone up flat. We're going to put a little bone plate and screws on here to hold everything in place. Now we're on top of the hill, so we still have completely normal function and range of motion, but you no longer have the hill to slide down. After three months of rehabilitation, Buka was discharged to be the happy dog that she is, but not without warning. We know in dogs in general that once they've injured one knee, the last study that came out was looking at Labrador Retrievers actually, and found that once a Labrador Retriever injures one knee, they have a 50% chance of injuring the other knee. For two years, Buka enjoyed being able to play again, live again, but then she became one of those statistics. Yes, Buka suffered the same injury to her left rear leg, but this time it was only a partial tear of her cranial cruciate ligament, about 25%, which means Buka was a candidate for regenerative medicine. When it comes to regenerative medicine, there's really two different types of technologies that we're currently using in veterinary medicine as well as in human medicine. One would be the blood type products, which we call PRP. So basically, think of it like when you're, you're shaving and you cut yourself shaving and what forms that little clot are platelets. So they're you know, floating around throughout our body. Those platelets have really potent factors that allow for healing and regenera regeneration as well as growth factors. So they stimulate the healing of tissues. So essentially we can take platelets from our body and process them and, and then inject them into an area of joint disease or ligaments or tendons. Um, and those growth factors are what we call cytokines, which are these magical little cells that basically allow the body to heal or call in other tissues in the body or cells in the body to help heal. That's PRP basically, which stands for platelet-rich plasma. The other area is using stem cells. Now the thing is a lot of people when they think stem cells, they think embryonic. And we're not talking about embryonic at all. This isn't, it has nothing to do with babies. These are adult stem cells. So in all the tissues in our body, such as bone marrow, such as periosteum or the surrounding of our bone, fat, our love handles right here, all these other tissues in our body, the stem cells are there. Adult stem cells, we all have them. And this is a way to try to harvest them. So our own adult stem cells, extract them, process them so we can put them back into the tissues that are basically injured. And that's really the two different types of areas that we're looking at in regenerative medicine. With Buka, we're harvesting her stem cells from her love handles. We're going to make a little small keyhole incision. 
just a small sample of fat can yield 5 million regenerative cells. The fat cells will be processed in the lab at Virginia Tech's Marion DuPont Scott Equine Medical Center. Buka's stem cells will be ready in a couple weeks. In the meantime, we're protecting her leg with this custom brace until we could get her back to Maryland for her stem cell injection therapy. So I liken stem cells to our teenagers. They really have the ability to be whatever they want to be when they grow up if we point them in the right direction. For instance, if we take these stem cells and place them in bone, they should be able to turn into bone. If we place them into heart tissue, they should be able to turn into heart tissue, put them in cartilage for osteoarthritis, they should be able to turn into to cartilage uh, and treat osteoarthritis. To think, less than a decade ago, regenerative medicine wasn't even a blip on the medical radar screen. Now it's transitioned into a mainstream veterinary treatment. Now, when I started um, as a boarded surgeon in 2003, we didn't have regenerative medicine technologies. Um, it was unheard of, at least in, in, in the world of small animal veterinary medicine. And now it's become very, very mainstream. Um, it seems to be coming that way in, in humans as well. We have a lot of questions we need answered. Um, so we're just scratching the surface, but I'm so excited to be involved in this. And, and it's my mission to try to get the answers to find out which technology is working best, which protocol works the best, what combination of types of therapies work. Um, so this is, this is sort of my new mission, if you would, is to really try to answer a lot of the questions that we need to have for our canine patients. And Dr. Knapp's mission and passion to find answers to some unanswered questions is about to become a reality. He and his team at Veterinary Orthopedic Sports Medicine Group are about to launch a large regenerative medicine study. The AKC, or the American Kennel Club, contacted us about six months ago. And the AKC said, we have seen some of your data and heard some of your presentations regarding these various regenerative medicine technologies that you're using for soft tissue injury as well as for osteoarthritis and we'd like to you to do a study for us. We'd like you to repeat your current work only as a placebo-controlled, randomized, double-blinded study. And we're just so fortunate that they've come to us and they're gonna have stipends for all these owners with their dogs from around the country that have either soft tissue injuries, in the particular case will be shoulder injuries or supraspinatus tendinopathy, or dogs with elbow osteoarthritis are the two different studies that we're looking at. And this is going to be going on for the next two years that we'll be enrolling dogs and looking objectively at the, at the use of these products for, uh, for dogs. Coming up next on Your Life Free to Find, will Buka stem cells save her torn knee ligament? So this is exciting, and it's exciting because it shows it's working. Stay tuned, Your Life Free to Find will be right back. Welcome back. We're on location in Annapolis Junction, Maryland, pursuing regenerative medicine to heal my furry kid Buka's partially torn knee ligament in her left rear leg. As you can see, she's on the OR schedule for a stem cell injection. Through a small incision, her surgeon will be able to inspect her knee and at the same time inject her stem cells right into the torn ligament. It's hard to believe it was a year ago Dr. Sherman Knapp confirmed it was a 25% tear of her cranial cruciate ligament. At the same time, some fat was collected from Buka's belly. This fat is where her stem cells were harvested from. She's like, gotta get some scratches. Okay, go ahead. As far as her gait analysis goes, it pretty much shows for the past 12 months, Buka's custom brace did its job at protecting her knee. We look at them on gait analysis with the brace on, they're bearing much more weight, they're much more comfortable going down that mat. We take the brace off, you can see they're not as comfortable. Had we not had that brace on the knee, there's no doubt that that partial tear would have progressed to a complete tear and possibly even torn our meniscus. We're gonna inject directly into the cranial medial band, so I'm gonna slide right through my portal Fortunately, we're still dealing with a partial tear. However, it has progressed from a 25% tear to a 45% tear. Instead of resorting to a traditional surgery, we are moving forward with using Buka's own cells to start the healing process. We'll do small little injections, Dr. Hart. Go ahead and get a picture. Okay, inject. Good. Check this out. You're watching 10 million of Buka's stem cells being injected right into her knee ligament. Those cells that we put in that ligament don't necessarily turn into ligament cells. Some can, they have that potential, but more so they say to the resident cells, because they're stem cells in our, all the tissues in our body, 
They say to those resident cells that have been very quiescent, not turning over and regenerating or turning into new tissue, hey, wake up, start turning into ligament. Here's the direction because of biomechanical load you need to, you need to go across. We're gonna go into a knee brace. We're gonna go into physical therapy. The rehab's really important, but we have to be careful. There's certain modalities we can't use with regenerative medicine, shockwave therapy, class four laser therapy. Um, so there'll be, we'll have all this written down for you. So when we send you down to Florida for your therapist, we'll make sure that they're not using modalities that could be potentially harmful to stem cells. So what are we gonna do now, Doc? I know we talked about lasers. This mm -hmm. is the cold laser, not yep. the... This is the cold laser. This is a class three B. Um, so this is what we want to use to help stimulate or upregulate the stem cells. Um, this has been shown to be safe and effective for stem cells so not harming them. Stem cells are being used to treat osteoarthritis, tendon and ligament injuries, and neurological conditions, with a price tag anywhere between $2,000 to $4,000. Reaching a definitive diagnosis and correctly executing this powerful treatment are both crucial in the success of this innovative procedure. Um, finding a diagnosis is the number one um, thing for us to do, and then once we do that, um, we can figure out the best treatment pattern. So one of our primary ways of doing that is diagnostic musculoskeletal ultrasound. Um, this way we don't have to have the cost for the owner for MRIs and we can actually follow it up because it's a much more economical um, diagnostic tool. Um, so we use that to determine tendon injuries, ligament injuries, soft tissue injuries that um, surround the shoulder or the Achilles tendon um, and then find a specific diagnosis and then be able to treat that more. Um, more properly. Now, fast forwarding 90 days. So we're going to go into full extension and if you look there's really no motion uh, in drawer. Go all the way up into flexion, try to move these two bones, really no motion in, in drawer either. So not only is the knee stable on the cranial tibial thrust test, very happy with what we're seeing there, but also very happy with what we're seeing on the anterior drawer test. Here we are back in Maryland for Buka's follow-up. So far, Dr. Sherman and Deborah Knapp are pleased with her physical exam. She's even bearing more equal weight on those back legs. Classically, when we in inject dogs with stem cell or PRP combination, PRP combination, it's about 90 days for these to heal. Now, with the previous CCL injuries that we've tested, they were right around 25% tear. So Buka has one of the largest, most significant um, tears that we've seen in a dog that we've attempted this type of treatment with. Um, surprisingly, this knee is very, very stable in palpation. So I'm actually uh, uh, quite optimistic that when we go in arthroscopically to evaluate the, um, the ligament that we will be seeing some positive effects. These areas that are red, this is all areas of what we would call neovascularization or angiogenesis, which is new blood supply, to a ligament, wow. which is unheard of. You, know, you don't usually see this. So this is exciting, and it's exciting because it shows it's working. I must admit, to see this healing process was pretty fascinating. That's why we're moving forward with a booster stem cell injection. Right before going into the OR, fresh stem cells were collected from Buka's bone marrow. These stem cells are being mixed with some of Buka's platelet-rich plasma, or PRPs, from her blood to enhance this second, and hopefully, final treatment. You guys are willing to take the risk, knowing that we always can fall back on a, a traditional repair if needed. What's amazing is that my cutoff for this type of technology is usually 25%. So you've already pushed me beyond my comfort zone or my boundaries, and at 45%, now we see I can actually push the envelope for future patients. This is not something I'd really considered before, and we're seeing that we can actually have regeneration or healing beyond that 25% mark. That's not something we've ever really uh, experienced. Really what we're seeing with our data and what we're seeing in Buka's case, you know, Buka's contributing to our data, is that this is just another, as you mentioned, tool in our toolbox. We, it, it's another um, treatment option that we can offer to patients that may be good candidates for regenerative medicine or may be good candidates for combination, a standard routine technique, but adding regenerative medicine to help with osteoarthritis or to help with other types of issues that we're dealing with. In the case of Buka, in the case of veterinary surgeons in general, the problem is why I think we don't have quite a lot of evidence yet to show is that there hasn't been a lot of research in this area. It's a very, very new area, you know, and so, and we're kind of behind in the, in the United States in humans compared to other countries. Where are a lot of our athletes going currently? They're going to Europe, they're going to Asia, they're going to South America. So many, many, many of our elite athletes that are looking for alternative treatments or therapies are flying to other countries because in the other places in the, in the world, they're ahead of the curve, unfortunately ahead of the United States, in regenerative medicine. It's the opposite in veterinary medicine. Here within the United States, we really are at the top of the pyramid, if you would, as far as treatment options. It all began with horses, and now it's trickled down to us being able to offer this to dogs. 
And here we are 90 days since Buka's last treatment and the brace is officially off. We're gonna be following Buka's progress online. Check out rl.tv. And when we come back, how regenerative medicine helped this father get back in the game. It's now time for some trivia. If it's been decades since you exercise on a regular basis, starting now won't do much to boost memory and brain power. True or false? The answer when we come back. Did you figure out our trivia question? Well, the answer is B, false. A large body of research shows that everyone, young, old, healthy or not, benefits from regular exercise. Scientists have found that people who are the most fit at midlife had a 36% less risk of developing dementia than those who weren't physically active. If you're just joining us, we're taking a look at regenerative medicine and how it's helping pets and people live healthier, more active lives. Let's check it out. Actually, I remember my tetanus shot hurting way more yeah. than that. Really? <laughs> yeah. This is Dallas Lier's second go around with regenerative medicine. This time, the 46-year-old physician is turning to his doctor, regenerative medicine expert, Dr. Victor Ibrahim, to find relief for an old sports injury. I have a posterior labral tear, either from football or swimming. Um, I, my shoulder clunks. Um, I, can, I can get the arm up over my head. It is, it is weak. It'll go up. If you look in here, this is the bone particles. We just removed it. It's part of the degenerated labrum. As part of today's procedure, Dallas's shoulder joint was first cleared of any degenerative debris. This gives instant pain relief, but it also creates space for healthy tissue to grow. This is when the goo goes in. So this is it, this is it, this is the... This is the, this is the magic, magic moment. To think there are cells in our bodies that can help us self-heal. The powerful concoction being used in Dallas's case came from his own blood. After 15 minutes in the lab, his platelet-rich plasma, or PRP for short, was isolated and prepped for his non-surgical injection. So now I'm just injecting into the labrum. So I just injected a little bit into the joint. Now I'm injecting directly into the posterior labrum. So I'm going right at the root of the labrum and I'm injecting all along the labrum right there. That's what people need to understand. You're just not going into the joint coldly. You're actually using guided ultrasound. ultrasound. Mm -hmm. And the images are amazing. very specific about exactly where we're going. So I'm right into the posterior labrum, and then I'm going right into the joint as well to bathe part of the joint. And these stem cells are basically in there waking up those cells, saying, wake up, wake up, come on. Exactly, they're activating the chondrocytes in those areas, and the tenocytes, different progenitor cells that can actually formulate new tissue. This is so cool, guys, because 48 hours ago, I was in the operating room with Dr. Knapp and my dog, Buka, and to see this being used in human medicine is just, it's, it's awesome. It's awesome. Our success rate is very high because we are very selective with who we treat, and we spend a lot of time uh, addressing issues that may have caused the degeneration. Behind every degenerative process is just usually a kinematic or movement dysfunction that's evolved. And so if we're very careful and holistic about how we treat patients, and tra including pre-rehabbing them, getting them prepared for regenerative treatment, and then rehabbing the tissues appropriately after in, in, uh, implementation, we have a very high success rate. We'll follow up on Dallas's shoulder in a couple weeks to see how he's doing. Think about it, two weeks versus the three months it would take to heal from traditional surgery. Pretty amazing. Dallas is a traditional physician who specializes in spinal cord injury, physical medicine, and rehabilitation. He became intrigued with regenerative medicine about a year ago when he first met Dr. Victor Ibrahim in Washington, D.C. Well, I'll tell you, it was completely brand new to me. Um, and the, the idea of regenerative medicine was, was something that, it, again, like you mentioned, in traditional medicine, we don't talk about these kind of things. And um, I, I worked with Dr. Ibrahim uh, in the same clinic and would see patients uh, walk into a, a clinic room and, or, or limp into a clinic room in many cases and walk out comfortably smiling, you know, no, no look of pain on their face and I was wondering, you know, what is, this, what is this guy doing? We like to use these sorts of methods for tendinopathies, tendon injuries, tendinitis. Uh, we think it's very successful for cartilage. Uh, diseases such as arthritis. Um, you can also use it for chronic nerve issues. So if a nerve is entrapped, such as carpal tunnel, if you've had surgery in these areas and it hasn't improved, we can release the scar tissue and then allow growth factors to help nerves heal, particularly outside of the spinal cord. We found a great success with that. 
When we come back, our up-close look at regenerative medicine continues. It, it was an idea that has now come to be, become a reality. Next on Your Life Redefined. Welcome back. We're taking a look at regenerative medicine and how it could redefine healthcare in our country. I think this is the future, and I think it's it's going to be important to add this uh, to the to the kaleidoscope of medicine. Spinal cord injury specialist Dallas Lie knows firsthand the restorative effects of regenerative medicine. There was a bony block at this point. I could not, even if I pulled on my ankle, I couldn't bring it up any Ooh. further. A partially fused ankle joint started to take its toll on Dallas physically and mentally. Well, I tell you, I, I saw myself declining. How robust was I going to be when my children were teenagers? Check out how limited Dallas's right ankle motion was before his non-surgical procedure and here's after. Um, and so we were able to debreed or remove this tissue non-surgically, improve his ankle range of motion, and then in his case we used a blood-derived regenerative growth factor to help rejuvenate some of the cartilage and ligaments in his ankle to give him improved functionality. In addition to using blood-derived cells for self-healing, Dr. Victor Ibrahim and his regenerative team turned to fat. Yes, good old fat. And lo and behold, fat seems to have probably the highest population or concentration of stem cells of any tissue in the body. And we've known that when we transplanted fat cells, that it's had this almost mystical effect in certain areas. From minimizing surgical scars to shortening recovery time, plastic surgeon Dr. Paul Ruff explains how they optimize a patient's stem cells. When we do have stem cells available, say we're doing a big fat injection at the same time as a facelift or a breast or something like that, we now commonly ask our patients, do you have any other issues, bone, joint, tendon irregularities that uh, you've been working with? If we see certain medication profiles, like somebody's constantly on ibuprofen or uh, some of these other common medications, I'll ask. And if they are, then they see Victor, have their scans done, and we do stem cell therapies at the time of surgery. But as with any new science, comes warning. It's very easy for the technology to get ahead of, um, of just good medicine. You can have uh, you know, the most high-tech, expensive, fancy regenerative treatment to, you know, a joint area. But if you don't make the right diagnosis and it turns out the problem is not in the joint, it's actually in the ligaments and tendons around the joint, you can put, you know, $20,000 worth of stem cells in there and it's not going to fix the problem. It may actually make things worse. And here we are, only two weeks after Dallas's shoulder injection, and we're on the football field. The best part about it was the healing was inside of me. No drugs. No drugs. <laughs> I often tell patients whenever they do have an incredible response that you know would be, you know, commented by someone as miraculous. It's really you've done the miracle yourself. It's not me. I've just facilitated the process, but it's completely yourselves. And I'm always amazed myself at what the body can do. We wish Dallas the very best. Now, when it comes to insurance companies, they do not cover regenerative medicine. But to give you an idea, cost-wise, it's about thousand dollars per procedure. Well, that's all the time we have left. Until next time, remember it's your life, live it, and live it well. For more information about your life redefined, check out our website at rl.tv.